So, plot twist, I'm actually still alive. And, uh, <laughs> first video in like, what is it, four months now? This is Lakeview Cabin Collection, which is gonna be, uh, episodic, I guess. This is the first one. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on it in the last day or two. I haven't seen anyone really beat it, though. And, uh, those that have beat it have, uh, lost everybody, lost the dog. And then they get killed at the end by, um, well, spoiler, the wife in the first game, I guess. So I ended up, uh, buying it, tinkering around for a while. And I've actually found a way to save all four kids, the dog, and not get killed at the end by the siren chick that waits for you at the pier. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear this area right here. After you've killed the two, the fishwife is gonna appear right there by the tiki poles. And uh, if you've saved at least one bullet in your gun, and you attempt to shoot her and there's an item between you, you just end up shooting the item. It's really frustrating. But that's not the route we're gonna go. First off, we're gonna get this key. For that, you need two people, no clothes, and uh, assume the position. Okay. Now that we've got the key, the room to the rifle is automatically unlocked for everybody. There's also a shell in that drawer, so remember to come back here, there's about two shells in all that I've found. In this room, there's nothing but a guitar and also a pair of matches that you can find at the backpack. The guitar is a good plan B for the baby mass killer, because if you whack that on the ground while he's near, it seems to stun him a bit. Okay, so grab the pug. We're gonna use the, uh, what you're looking for in this toolbox is a hammer, and you can use that to board up the planks. And, uh, we're gonna use that to get across the gap right here. If you fall, you'll break a leg, be crippled. Anyways, now that we're up here, we can roll this thing up and get access to a gas can, a scythe, and also the large axe that the killer generally wields. So we're going to use a scythe to open a case in the next building, which also contains a shell. Okay, this room's a generator. You can go in there to turn it back on when the killer starts to uh, fiddle with it. Um, with this, usually I make a line and then uh, put the gas can at the end. Uh, sometimes I've been able to actually just shoot the serial killer and he flies into the gas can and it just blows him up insta-death. It's great. So we're going to take this axe and use it to get into um, the girl's bathroom. What we're going to be looking for in there is a teddy bear, and uh, usually the only way to get in is to either um, have the killer bash it down, or take the killer's axe and bash it down yourself. Aside from barricaded doors, you can also use this on regular doors. You can also use it to smash open the glass where the flare gun is. Okay, so to get the teddy bear, use the toilet. Just wait it out. Okay, so leave the axe in there. We're gonna need that for uh, when the fishwife shows up. So take the teddy bear and uh, put it close to where the serial killer spawns. I recommend putting it after the box because we're gonna try to crush him with the box as soon as he starts walking around. Alright, so we're gonna grab Pugsley, come over here, drop that. So, uh, on top of this box right here is pretty much the only safe place in the game. Nothing at all can hurt you there. Um, they can't jump down, they can't jump on it. So this is where we're gonna stand with the dog. Meanwhile, however, this guy is gonna wait behind the tree over here, just because I like to have him close to the generator to turn it back on when the serial killer cuts it out. Okay, so we're gonna take the scythe and break the box. Only hit it once because uh, there's a bunch of flares in there, and if you uh, hit those with the scythe, it's gonna blow your guy up and just kill him outright. Yeah, I found that out from experience. So grab the gun. All you have to do is walk over the shell and he automatically loads it, and you'll hear the cocking. So we're going to leave the gun there, hide behind the tree, making sure everyone's in position. Ah. 
Okay, you don't want to stand on that box yet because uh, we can get a free hit off on the serial killer by um, just holding it up and waiting for him to walk under it. Now, see this bell right here? Um, in the original game, you hit O to summon the monster, but in this game, um, he usually comes on his own in a few days, or you can just ring that bell with X and he'll come immediately. I had to do it, but at the moment, it's just about night, and even turning the lights back on, visibility is still pretty low. So for the sake of um, the recording, we're uh, just going to wait till morning. So, um, I'll put in the annotations when um, it's daylight again. Or you could just skip forward until you see the light of day, for everyone that's just here to watch the walkthrough. Now, for everyone from my channel who's probably uh, expecting an explanation for where I've been for four months, uh, that, and I haven't even made contact or answered comments or messages or whatnot, uh, okay, so here it is. So, um, over in New Mexico, I've actually got sort of a family estate. And uh, it was built um 50s, 60s. One family, uh, the wife had lost her husband, and another family, the husband had lost his wife. So they just ended up uh, marrying each other and, you know, combining the families. So they ended up with, like, uh, ten kids. It was, uh, yeah. So, um... The father was a professor, so he had the money to just um, go out, buy some land, and build a house there. And then the house, again, it had to house, like, ten kids. So it's got about six bedrooms, um, four bathrooms, and it's just, it's pretty huge. So that guy was my grandfather, and recently he's, uh, well, his mind's been going, I guess, um, dementia, Alzheimer's, and not to mention he has uh, diabetes, and he just can't seem to quite take care of himself anymore. So, um, he's going to a really nice retirement center. And, uh, the house is just too expensive to keep up, you know, with all the property taxes and, uh, heating and lights. And it's, they just, I, so apparently, you know, all the family's just thinking of cleaning it up and selling it. And, uh, it needs a lot of work. And termites, uh, broken sprinklers, the lawn needs to be completely reseeded. So, um, I guess around December, I went over with my father. Him and his other siblings are just, you know, getting it ship shape. So when we went over in December, the heating, um, it's a fossil heating system, it had actually broken. And it was, uh, what was it, a constant, like, 50-something degrees. I had brought over all my recording equipment, and this was like the day after uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 had just come out. And it was, ah, oh, it was so bad because, you know, I had made, you know, the title card, I had bought it, I was all set to just start recording. But as soon as I got there, it was so cold, and the house is so creepy. I don't know, I just couldn't do it. So, I've just been sort of working over there for uh, four months now. Um, we're almost done. Who knows, a couple more weeks, or it could be a month if we run into another problem. I'm still off college, and um, I've been working, so, you know, that's even harder now. I just, I don't know if I have the time to keep putting into regularly, uh, you know, making videos. And I've already decided against monetization. I just, I don't feel right, you know, partnering with anybody or even doing the YouTube monetization kind of thing. Uh, I don't think I should do that until I'm able to put at least way more time into making videos. Right now it's just sort of a when I get around to it. <sighs> Here we go, daylight. Mercifully putting an end to my rambling. Okay, so it is go time. Okay, so Crow's flying by signals that he's here. First move he makes, he always walks into the shack and cuts the power. Of course, that's not such a problem, since we waited till day, anyhow. Okay, here he comes. Isn't he a looker? Alright, so now we'll go to the brunette and drop it just as he gets under. There we go. Okay, so grab Pugsley and... Just walk onto this platform. We put the teddy bear out so he'll just grab that first thing. 
Also, um, this is kind of off uh, center right now as I turn the power back on, but while you're standing on the crate, don't have anyone raise it. I've noticed while setting this up at the beginning of the game that if you raise the thing while someone's standing on it, it throws them off and breaks their leg, just so you know. Okay, so... Now the reason we gave him the teddy bear is that um, he'll pick it up, he won't really take any other weapon besides it. And uh, most importantly, when he hits you, it does zero damage. It doesn't even knock you over, you know? It's um, a worse weapon than fighting barehanded. And um, now we can just easily kind of take him down like this. Just be careful that when you do knock him down and he drops the teddy bear, don't destroy it. Because if you do, he's uh, gonna knock you down and take your weapon. Also, keep in mind that uh, Chuck Norris is going to be um, making his appearance on the opposite side of the island as soon as we start whacking this kid. He's probably already there right now, but fortunately we're all the way on the left side of the island, which is where I chose to do this because it takes him so long to get here. Okay, so whack him enough times and that kid is neat. And unlike burning him, he's not going to come back scarily that you need to, you know, shoot him or throw something at him to make him turn to dust. Alright, so we'll go and check on Red. Okay, see the broken rake and the knife? Um, that means, you know, he stepped on the rake with the knife and dropped it. So he's already been that way. So we'll watch from Porno Mustache's view. Oh, yep, there he is. Balding Chuck Norris. Eh, still looks pretty good. It's been like, what, 20 years? Okay, he's grabbed that scythe, but it doesn't matter because we are going to walk into the shack and grab the gun. Uh, just so you know, Chuck Norris is fast. He's faster than your characters and can easily outrun them. But there's a way to slow him down, and it's called shooting him. That automatically blows off his leg, and he'll be slower than you, so... That's, I find, the most reasonable way to just automatically make him manageable. Because otherwise, you know, unless you can find a hiding place, he just, you know, gains on you until he just beats you to death. Okay, remember to jump off before... Yeah, okay. So jump off at the right time and you won't get hurt or dead. Um, okay, now here's the important part. That chicken white, siren, whatever, she's gonna appear and start singing a song. You have a small window of time to get all the way to the end of the dock before she appears. Okay, so we've obviously made it. Walking over there with an axe is, I think, the easiest way to take care of her. Because uh, I've tried a number of ways to kill her. Like, I saved a bullet in that uh, rifle, I shot her, and then all she did was uh, crawl back into the lake and escape, and then the game ended there. Um, like, you couldn't pick her up and throw her in the shredder at all. So, I think this is probably going to be the most uh, final way to take care of her, I guess. So anyways, we're all here. Let's uh, gather everybody around. Gang's all here. Dog is alive and healthy. Lumberjack's here, Pornal Mustache is here, Brunette's here, and of course we've got Red taking up the back with the axe. Alright, get ready. BAM! See, and you can just hammer the attack button, and it just it goes and goes and goes and goes. So there you have it. Um, I think that's probably the best ending there is. <laughs> uh, well, at least for us. You know, we managed to save the four stupid teenagers and their pug. We killed the baby mask killer, we killed Chuck Norris, we killed the whatever the hell thing he was married to. Part siren, part, you know, monster from the Black Lagoon. But, uh, yeah, hey, we did it. Yay! I don't know why, I just had a lot of fun with this game, just because it's so, um, open, you know? There's a million different ways to do anything, and all this extra stuff that you could do for no reason. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a realistic horror, you know? There's a lot of red herrings, there's a lot of stuff you can try that won't work, and maybe it'll work once, but it's a one in a million and you'll never be able to do it again. Like one time I shot the Chuck Norris guy and he just flew into a gas can and just exploded spectacularly. 
you know, I think there should be more games like this, you know? It's uh, not very visually intensive pixel game, but it still manages to look gorgeous. And, uh, you know, it's realistic too. I mean, you know, you're not just walking in and gunning everything down. You've got maybe two bullets if you can really scrounge them up. And if you go at the killer, you know, with a knife and, you know, just face him head on, he can't win, you know, he just kills you. I don't know, I really liked this game. And uh, it's, uh, what was it, $9.99 on the Humble Bundle. And yeah, that does sound kind of expensive, but remember, uh, there's going to be like three or four more, I believe. You can look at them in the theater. Um, it's episodic, so I don't know uh, what the release dates will be, but we'll be getting more games for that amount of money. Not to mention, um, we'll be supporting it, and you know, I'm always pro-support indie games. Especially when they've got as much love and creativity as this one does. And hey, if not, just go play the original. That one's free. So, yeah. Long time no see. I miss you guys. I'll see you some other time, and, uh, don't go visiting any cabins. <laughs>